MS Women on the Move Luncheon. This event is a leadership initiative designed to bring men and women together in the movement to finding a cure for multiple sclerosis. Across the country, over 20 chapters will hold Women on the Move Luncheons with attendees who will come together to learn more about multiple sclerosis and to honor and support their family, their friends, their colleagues, and their neighbors who are living with the disease. I'm looking forward to hearing these wonderful women speak and I'm looking forward to interviewing them. I'm Jane Ruby. Come along with me for the Inside Look. I'm here with Janice Dean, who is our keynote speaker today at the MS Women's Luncheon. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. It's our honor. Janice, tell us how you first learned you had MS and what inspired you to really come out publicly with it. I was diagnosed 10 years ago, uh, 2005. I'm a weather caster and I was coming off a very busy hurricane season, the busiest our country has ever seen. We had Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita, we went to the uh, Greek alphabet, there were so many names, and I was just overwhelmingly tired and my whole career was like go, go, go. I, you know, I, I, I had endless energy and for me to say I don't think I can even get out of bed was very bizarre. So I took some time off. Uh, I went back to my hometown in Canada with my then boyfriend, who's now my husband, uh, and you know, literally the, the day after I decided to take vacation, I woke up and I had no feeling at the bottoms, the soles of my feet, and uh, parts of my thighs, and I thought, this is strange, and I'm so tired, to the point of I can't even get out of bed, and that is not normal. So I uh, went to a local physician uh, and she basically said to me, I remember that day, she said, you know, you could have anything from a slip disc to multiple sclerosis. And I thought, who is this crazy lady telling me this? She said, you know, you got to go back to the U.S. and get some MRIs done, especially since the symptoms are not going away on their own. So I did uh, and I got MRIs done and the MRI showed lesions on my brain and spine and the doctor did a spinal tap in his office and the spinal tap showed the proteins that they looked for in the spinal fluid that are, is it also an indicator of uh, MS. It's a very complex diagnostic It procedure. really is. Usually it's several uh, several relapses before they can diagnose you but he pretty much said you have all the classic symptoms here. You know you 98% have this but here's your steroids and come back to see me in a few months for another round of MRIs and I thought well, you just gave me like a, a, a heart, heart, heart stopping diagnosis. This is ridiculous. So I went for a second and a third opinion, and they pretty much confirmed, you know, within the year that I had MS. And once it was confirmed, you reached out to what you then learned was a, a very prestigious colleague. Yes, managing editor and senior vice president of Fox Business and Fox News Channel. And he uh, kind of calmed the waters and normalized. Listen, I'm so lucky because to me he's a trailblazer. I, he had already come out with his diagnosis, was very open about it, and I, as soon as I was diagnosed, I wanted to just look for people who were doing okay living with the illness surviving but thriving and he was that for me he was right down the hall so I called him I said I I had to talk to him went into his office and cried a river and he just kept holding handing me Kleenexes and saying it's not a life sentence we work for an amazing company Roger Ailes who was our boss said I will build wheelchairs if I have to it's wonderful a amazing and that's my big message is people are afraid to talk about the illness it still has a stigma attached even though we're getting close to yeah I think we're getting very close to a cure if, if not a cure a uh, a halt to the progression of the disease. You have become, your your goal was to become the person you were looking for. I thought that was a very powerful statement on stage today. Yeah. And you have become that person. What effect has that had on other women and maybe just other people in general who are newly diagnosed? I'm sure they've shared with you. It's a, it is amazing. And you know, this age of Facebook and Twitter, I hear more often than not, you know, I my mom has this, my sister has this, my friend has this, and we know you have this, and it gives us hope. It inspires sure. us. Because there she is, she's doing her job, and she's doing a great job, and she's living with this, but she's doing okay. She's managing. Sure. She's managing, and that's most important. one of the most important things is, yes, we need therapies, and yes, we need good physicians, but we also need hope, that glimmer sure. of hope well, that you, everything's going to be okay. Hope. And speaking of job, senior meteorologist at Fox News yep. and published author, yes. tell us what's coming up next. I'm excited to hear about what is going on in your career. What's the inside look into your career? Inside look is I am so excited to be a children's book author. Uh, I write a series of books called Freddy the Frogcaster, teaching kids about weather. Love that. And you know, my whole thing is I want kids to be educated 
like getting an illness, being educated, and being to be able to prepare in advance before a storm so it's not as scary. So that's my big message. And Freddie is a little frog who loves forecasting the weather, frog casting the weather. And what's his future? His future? <laughs> his future is very bright. So the third book is coming out. He's be busy. He's busy. Uh, and it, it deals with a hurricane and how people, kids, can prepare for uh, the possibility for a hurricane. Because uh, you don't want people to become complacent. And how kids can get involved with their teachers and parents and be more proactive to do things in advance of a potential storm and that will take the scare out of a situation. That and, and you might be uh, spurring a new generation of meteorologists. Yes! <laughs> That's another thing that I hope to do is, is every, every school I go to is to inspire kids to like science and math and, and hopefully inspire a new generation of meteorologists. Shannon Breen, newly dubbed uh, legal correspondent at Fox News. Yes, it is a wonderful place. Thank you. Thank wonderful you. to see you here today. I wanted to ask you how you got interested in the MS and the MS luncheon for women. Well, you know, my friend Janice Dean um, was one of the key speakers today, and she's been living with the disease for 10 years. She's a really close friend, and she's very transparent about what it's meant in her life, and just want to support her. And it turns out we all do know people with MS. Some of them may be public with it, some of them more private, but in all of our lives, there is somebody who's, you know, living with the disease. And then tell us what exciting things are happening in your career. I know you were just newly um, uh, appointed as the legal correspondent for Fox News. Yeah, I've been covering the Supreme Court for them for several years. I love it. I used to be an attorney, so now I feel like I kind of get to use many different skills doing my job. And there are several big cases coming up at the court this term. That'll wrap up late June, early July. So this is the busy time of year. It's kind of Super Bowl season for us, those of us who sure. cover the court. Um, but of course, the 2016 campaigns have already kicked off, and we're all busy covering those as well. So I like that in our work, it's a different day every day. You don't have a chance to get bored. So Absolutely. What exciting things do you think you might do, or something different that you might do in the role that you've seen your predecessors compared to what your predecessors have done? Well, uh, I think that the campaigns present a lot of opportunities to get to know the uh, different candidates. And I think right now uh, what's important is that social media, um, you can get so much closer to them. Um, you can talk with them and immediately turn around video for somebody very quickly. So I think we cover campaigns in a different way now. And I think it benefits the public because they get to know a lot more about the potential candidates. Very true. Thank you. Carrie Marriott, who is a member. committee member. So nice to speak to you. What a wonderful event. Thank you. It has been, this is our 11th year, yes. and we I just feel so fortunate that we've had the success that the MS Luncheon has garnered throughout the DC community because it's such an important event to raise awareness about the disease. Yes. Because we usually have someone speaking who ha is living with MS. Today we had Janice Dean, sure. who's a Fox Senior Meteorologist. Yes. She was amazing. Shannon Bream interviewed her today. And it allows people to see the disease from the inside yes, and really absolutely. understand how it affects everyday life. And so this luncheon is about raising money, but also about raising awareness. And how did I'm you get involved that. in the Marriott with the event? 11 years ago, my dear friend Amy Knight and I were approached by the then chapter president, Jean Angulo, and she said, so 
we're thinking of doing this luncheon, and we think you should co-chair it. And neither Amy nor I, well, maybe Amy, had, maybe she had co-chaired. I certainly had never co-chaired anything, and I was fairly new to Washington. My husband and I had just moved back. He's a native Washingtonian. And I said, gosh, we've never chaired anything. But we had an amazing team at the MS Society help us, and we didn't even have a committee that year. It was just the two of us. And Terry Gar was our first speaker. Oh, and we had 500 women come to this very hotel, From an Gordon idea. And Park Marriott. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just grown and flourished. And we we had almost a thousand women last year. We had over six, almost 600, I think, this year. And it's just been a remarkable outpouring of support from the D.C. women's community, and now we're getting a few men in there, too. What was your favorite part of today? Tell me. I loved the dynamic between Shannon and Janice when Shannon shared her, when Janice shared her story, because I think having that conversation, having the two of them there, being able to play off each other, it you really have to put yourself in a vulnerable position to share that kind of intimate look into your life and into one of your biggest struggles. I think Janice would not disagree that MS changed her life in a lot of ways. I had a great time at the MS Women on the Move luncheon. The chapter will donate 100% of the funds raised through donations, ticket and table sales to support local families living with MS and to provide hope for tomorrow through national research to find a cure. And that's why Inside Look TV was honored to be a sponsor of today's event. Please support your local MS Society and look for us online in social media. I'm your host, Jane Ruby. I'll be looking for you next time.